I'm very proud of being born and bred in Umlazi. It's shaped a lot of the kind of person that I am. I was brought up by a single mother, although it didn't feel like it because I have a huge family. So everybody was a mom, a dad, an uncle. And a big part of who I am today and the things that I do are because I understand why it's important for me to succeed. Because my success inspires some kid I may never meet that yes, I too, coming from B-section Umlazi, could do amazing things. It goes back to high school. I had just figured out what it is that I wanted to study at university. Um, one of my blessings is that I've always known I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, I never quite figured out um, early on what is it that I needed to study in order to do that. And a teacher of mine got us doing this research of careers, etc. And I learned that a lot of the big listed companies that were started by people those people were either chartered accountants or they were engineers. And I was very good at maths, I loved English, and I thought I could, you know, do this BCom thing. Only problem was, I come from a family of teachers. So my, my grandparents, my mom, my aunts and uncles. So I had no real means of being able to be paid for to go to the universities I needed to go to. So uh, as a responsible young man, I started applying for bursaries. I wrote hundreds of letters. And I think my motivation at the time is because I knew that it was my only shot at being able to go to the university I needed to go to and have a real good shot at becoming a chartered accountant. So I must say that when I look back at my career and my life, the day Deloitte confirmed that they'd be paying for my studies was, I think, the day everything changed. Uh, before then, I had even learned the art of accepting rejection. Purely by virtue of the amount of times I got letters that said, sorry, we regret to inform you, et cetera, et cetera. And having gone to just two interviews, uh, the first was with actually the South African uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants. And the other one was at Deloitte. And it was the first time for many things for me. The first time I met that many white people in the same room, older particularly, and also had you know, almost the responsibility to impress them, to show them that, you know, I was worthy of them taking me to university. And I, I remember like it was yesterday. I remember the old Deloitte office in downtown Durban on Devonshire Place. I remember sitting at reception, being taken up into this room. It was a panel. Um, there was no, not a single black guy in the entire panel. I think I remember an Indian lady, but everyone was old and white. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, like I really need this, but I have no idea how to behave in front of these people. So to cut a long story short, I got that bursary and it thoroughly, it literally, in fact, changed my life because I was able to go to the University of Natal, I was able to do my BCom degree. I was very clear about why I was there, so I wasn't one of those crazy students, although I had a great student life. Um, and, and that put me in the league of, um, I'm a graduate, I'm a postgraduate, I then get an opportunity to go and write these board exams. I pass first time. I get taken overseas on an exchange program by Deloitte. And basically, your, my life changed. But the point, when I look back, that that life changed was the day these guys told me, for as long as you pass, we'll forever pay for your studies in any South African university. And I have to say that I owe a lot to that point. I finished my um, articles with Deloitte, and I need to get a job. But just before I go overseas, I'm out with my friends on a night out in Durban. Good friend of mine used to host parties, so I'm there. And it's a day I should not have been going out party. It was a Sunday night, I recall, at a very popular hotel, the Hilton Hotel in Durban. They had a club there called Rivets. And my friend used to host these Sunday night gigs. So there I was with my mate, you know, doing what young people do when they're doing articles. And he introduces me to this guy. His name is Kumo Shunyane. He's an executive at Investec. And we start chatting, he asks me what I do, I ask him what he does. And I'm a very blessed person, you know, there's like things that happened in my life that I have no reason why at that point it happened. And when I look back, it, it had one thing in common, there was all these people, there was all these relationships, there was all this connection. So I meet this guy on the arb night, we start talking, he tells me he's an Investec Corporate Finance, the M&A division of Investec. And I start telling him, oh wow, I'd love to work in a, such an environment because this is what I want to do. I want to be an entrepreneur. And I figured out that when I finish articles, I do not want to do auditing in 
fact, I want to be in a bank, I want to be an investment banker, I want to do deals, I want to do mega transactions for other people so that I can learn the tricks of the trade. Me selling my mouth, unbeknown to me, was me getting myself into a job because he gave me his number, he told me I must call him. I didn't call him, he called me back and said, listen, but I said you must call me. So, kind of story short, ended up being flown to Johannesburg, did an interview at Investec. At Investec, they've got their own process of how you do these interviews. So you must meet everybody in the corporate finance team one by one. They take five minute turns to come and say, how's it? Um, and then of course you meet the bosses. And I remember Andy Leith, who's still at the bank, walked in when it was his turn to come and meet me. And he says, ah, so you're the guy Kumo met in the club. And you know, that was it for me. That was kind of the, the energy I liked about that place. And I spent just short of two years at Investec and I learned an immense amount. And the reason why I go back to that point of meeting Kumo, other than the fact that he's still my mentor, is that me joining Investec has dots that connect with how it is that I'm even here. Because having left Investec to start my first business, I then get invited to Metro FM for an interview that an entrepreneurship slot. I go in there and I remember Melimi Bala was uh, hosting it at the time. And we talk about my business at the time. I started a consulting business. I also started a courier company. And you know, I was busy with my thing. The very next week, I get invited to go and watch a football match. It was the World Cup in 2006, and Investec was holding a client event at their offices in Greyston. And I go and watch this football match. I remember clearly it was Brazil versus Ghana. And the reason why it was important is because Brazil had made it already to the second round of the World Cup, but Ghana, the only remaining African team, um, had a chance to progress, but they had to beat Brazil, which was near impossible, but you know, all Africans were hoping. Uh, needless to say, Bafana was no longer in the running. So, you know, it was a big game from that perspective. So I went to go and watch the game and Kumo was still there. He welcomes me. So at the same function, um, there was Given Mkari and Simpio Mdalosa also attending. Kumo Shunyane then tells me that actually, um, they have just agreed a transaction to buy a minority stake into MSG Africa. Of course, the company started by the two guys. So I congratulate them, he introduces me to them. No, oh, Andy needs to be with the team. He now does uh, these kind of businesses, do what he does. So I thought you guys should meet. Cut long story short, I get invited to some other party now, the after party to Ghana losing the match. Um, and we just hit it off. Given and I just get along and Simpiwe. And um, I guess the rest is history. A week or so after that, we organize a golf game. I just started golf. Given and I also just started golf. Um, we start talking about a potential transaction I thought we could look at together. And then he says to me, Andy, I'd like you to think about something else. And I go, okay, what's up? He says, Best Tech has just come into our business. We're still very small. These are the big ambitions that we have. Between Simpio and I, we don't have a finance head. We don't have a, a, a numbers guy. And when I listened to your interview on Metro FM, I go, you listened to my interview on Metro FM? He says, I listened to every word. And I thought to myself, who is this guy? And I'm going, and we met, he says, yeah, and it was, you know, of course, you no know, fate had it that we met. So I thought about it long and hard and it just made sense. So I came on board as a third partner in the business. And like they say in the books, the rest is history. You know, often you don't realize what's happening to you until you have the opportunity to pause and look back. And I know Steve Jobs has got this thing about how dots connect. And I firmly believe that. The consistent theme between all of these points that I've shared with you, for me, is probably my God-given ability to connect with people, but it's also what I am clearly not conscious of, which is what impression that leaves with people. I used to go to Deloitte for VAC work, and that was the time you're not at university and you're on holiday. And you know many other uh, VAC employees would just photocopy and make coffee. I insisted on doing the work. And so if you do that for four years on every holiday, twice a year, by the time I started my first year of articles, I knew half of what a first year clock knew. Because in every job I was at, I had this ability to, to get into spaces that I shouldn't get into, but I didn't have to ask, I or I didn't have to push. It was my ability to connect with people that invited myself into those spaces anyway. So, so meeting Kumo, for example, him, Backing this guy, he literally met the other night, saying, we gotta interview this guy. A meeting given, who, even after Simpiwe exited the business, it's as if I've known him and Simpiwe still for all my life. Because of the, I think, the, the impact of this connection, this human connection that I guess I just have, but I've never really paused to appreciate it. 
um, and how these, all these points in my life connect around people, connect around the art of connection. So all of these points have culminated to the business that is MSG Africa today. The group is an operator of two radio stations, uh, starting with Capricorn FM, it's eight years this year. Um, 1.2 million listeners on average over the time. Power 98.7, just launched two and a half years ago. We are really, really causing trouble. Uh, ask anybody who loves talk radio, they'll tell you. And it's just opened up so many other avenues. I'm on air myself now, talking about the thing I love most, which is business and entrepreneurship. Something that's been a passion of mine since I was a little boy. We also have the opportunity um, also to open two more radio stations this year in the Free State and also in the Eastern Cape. So we look forward to that. And really what Given and I are about building just something that South Africans can look to and go, that wasn't acquired from some other company. You know, that's not a radio station bought from the SABC and renamed and repositioned. These guys started with nothing, literally zilch, and built a group and it's something that's there for everybody to see. And therefore make South Africans, all South Africans, should believe that they too can do it. Because yes, I'd like to believe I'm special, my mom tells me every day, but we're all special.